Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Peter. I'm a program manager in the data platform security team at Microsoft. And I'm going to talk about protecting your data with Ledger in Azure SQL Managed Instance. And Ledger is all about um, data integrity. How can you be 100% sure that nobody has actually tampered with your data, that it can be fully trusted, right? So it's all about bringing the power of blockchain with the simplicity of SQL Server. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to make, like I just said, the data inside secret, tamper evident, using cryptographic. And when I say cryptographic, it's really, we're using a blockchain technology under the hood. It's not distributed blockchain, it's centralized blockchain. Um, so we're, what we're doing, we're capturing all the transactions on these ledger tables, and we're going to cryptographically going to link them. So we're going to hash them and link them to each other and make it uh, tamper evident and verifiable. Right? Ledger already existed in SQL, Azure SQL Database and SQL Server 2022 since last year. And yesterday we have introduced here Ledger also in Azure SQL Managed Instance, right? Um, so it's easy for our customers. It's embedded in SQL. Um, and uh, you, you, have the, um, yeah, you still have the high performance and the simplicity of SQL. But on top of that, you get that um, extra feature called Ledger. Now, really quickly, um, so what is Ledger? We have the concept of an updatable Ledger table and append only. Updatable means insert, update, delete statements that we're going to allow. Append only, we're only allowing insert statements. Now, assume that you have a user and is doing an update on an updatable Ledger table. What we're going to do is we're going to take the old version of the row and we're going to put that in a history table. On top of that, we're going to add extra metadata like uh, the commit time of the transaction, the user that executed that transaction, um, and whether it was an update, uh, an insert, or a delete statement. Uh, you also have a ledger view, which is basically a combination, uh, a chronicle overview of your data, combination of the updatable ledger table and the history table. Now, this is all how we keep track of the transactions, but where do we get the data integrity from? Well, that is done by the database ledger. Right? So what we're doing, every single transaction is going to be hashed uh, by using a Merkle tree mechanism. So at, at the end, we're going to form a block. And we're going to link that block to the previous block that we have just generated. Um, we do that like every 30 seconds, or the user can also do that manually. Once we've generated that block, or we also call it a database digest, what we're going to do is we're going to offload that digest outside the database to trusted storage. What do we consider as trusted storage is an Azure storage account with the immutability settings switched on, or uh, we also have another service called Azure Confidential Ledger. Now it becomes interesting, of course, because an external party like an auditor or a regulator or somebody else, uh, they can run a verification procedure. And what we're going to do there is we're going to fetch the digest from the digest storage, and in real time, we're going to recalculate the same hash inside the database, right? And then we're going to match these two hashes. And if we have a match, well, then we have cryptographic proof that the data has not been tampered with and can be fully trusted. If the hashes do not match, well, yeah, then we also have proof that somebody has actually tampered with the data. And you can also see that in the return of the procedure. Make sense? All right, let's jump into the demo. Um, so we are going to use uh, the concept of an um, hospital, which is Contoso Clinic. And Contoso Clinic, they're using an application called Patients Hub um, that allows you to see all your uh, patient's information. The patients can also log in. They can see uh, what surgeries they had. Um, they can see uh, their personal data. And they can also see um, the medication that they're going to take. Now, in this demo, remember, we're going to, uh, I'm going to use three different persons. So we have Christina. She just had a knee surgery, and as you can see, she's in a lot of pain. She's not, but be 100% sure she's in a lot of pain. So um, she wants to have some extra medicines, and she asks to the doctor, um, can you give me more medicines? But the doctor said, no, um, one is enough. Um, I'm not going to give you more. Keep that in mind. Then we have Betty. Betty is the DBA at the hospital, and she has access to all the databases in, uh, of, um, of, the, of the hospital. And then we have Michael, and Michael is an external auditor that uh, is going to be hired to verify the data. All right? These are the three persons. So um, let me jump, first of all, to the portal. 
So to show you here, I'm actually connected to a managed instance, managed database, and now we have the option ledger here where you can actually configure your automatic digest storage, right? So offloading the digest to the storage account. Very easy, you just need to enable it here, uh, click storage account or Azure Confidential, and you need to specify the storage account, right? This is um, new in the portal since yesterday, so if you want to use Ledger, go there um, and you will see that um, portal functionality. All right, so this is the personal file of Christina, and as you can see, um, here she has some Vicodin and she only has like the quantity of one. Like I said, that's not enough, so she wants to have um, some more. Now, the doctor refuses, but she knows uh, Betty, who is the DBA and at the hospital, and she asks Betty, yeah, um, you have access to the database, right? So can you please do an update for me <clears throat> um, so that I get, instead of one, that I gain like 10 doses of Vicodin? And Betty's like, mm, uh, sure, you're my friend, I can help. No problem. And yeah, since I'm not going to do this through the application, but I'm really going to do this inside SQL, nobody will ever notice, right, that I'm done, that I'm doing this. Okay, so Betty, <coughs> she logs into the management studio, and as you can see here, I'm connected to uh, the MI, the database called Patients Hub, and yes, we have a table called Medicines, which is an updatable ledger table, as you can see. So. I'm logged in here as Betty, which is a DBA, and she's looking for um, the data of Christina. She knows, okay, it's patient ID um, 2865. So let's look into the medications table. And we can see here the doses of Vicodin, and it is set to one. All right, cool. So. We're going to write an update statement and the refills instead of one. Let's go for 10, right? Okay, let's do that. When we're affected, Betty and Christina, they both think nobody will see that. All right, let's have a look in the application. So I just need to log out, and then I need to log in again. There we go. And what you can see here is Christina can see in her personal file that she has a refill of 10. That's what she wanted. Okay, now, um, a few weeks later, Michael comes in, and Michael is the auditor, and before he starts investigating um, the data inside the database, he wants to verify whether the data can be trusted so that he's sure that um, the data that he's looking at, that nobody has actually tampered with that data. So he runs a verification procedure through this application, so we're running ledger verification, and ledger verification uh, succeeded, which means now he can start investigating um, the, uh, the data that is inside the database. All right, so he's running or he's clicking this button and um, he's doing his investigation and he can see all of a sudden that there is some change in the refills, right? And what he sees is that an, a change, um, sorry, an update is, locked as a delete statement first, where we're going to delete the old version of the record, and then an insert statement, which means the new version of the record. And we can see the refills has changed from one to 10. And he can also see that it has been done by a user called Betty, right? So now we have proof that um, Betty has modified the data and there's no way that she can deny that she has done that because we have cryptographic proof um, that Betty has actually tampered with that data, right? So how does this work under the covers, uh, this application? So this is a ledger table, and if you look under the ledger table, then we have also the history table. Like I explained in the slides, uh, we have um, the same, or we mimic the same schema of the ledger table, but on top of that, we're adding extra metadata to it, right? Now, if we're using uh, the, the list that you saw in the screen where Michael was investigating the data, um, we're using that ledger view under the covers here. And on top of that, we're going to join that with a new system table called Sys Database Ledger Transactions, where we can actually see what has happened. So if I execute this, then you can see 
that indeed the commit time of the transaction, um, yeah, I'm in UTC time, no worries. Um, so the user was Betty because I was logged in here in the management studio as Betty. And like I said, an update statement in the um, history table is logged as an, a delete statement first of the old version where you can see the refills was set to one and then an insert statement uh, for the new version where the refills are two. So here we know exactly who did what and when. To prove that the data can be trusted, we have a new uh, stored procedure, which is called SP Verify Database Ledger from Digest Storage. Um, and it needs to have a, a parameter, which is the digest location. And the digest location is the one that I've configured here. That is my storage account, right? So if I go back to my management studio and I run this stored procedure, you can see that I'm using the correct digest location. I've verified up to block ID 47. Of course, this is for demo purposes, so there are not a lot of blocks in this database. And the result uh, says ledger verification successfully. Something you can also see here, um, verified up to block 47. So just running that, like I said, we're going to uh, recalculate the hash and then do the match. Make sense? So this is all about ledger. Um, try it out, I would say. Um, it's really, it's a cool feature. It is available in Azure SQL DB, in SQL Server 2022, and also in, um, now in Azure SQL Managed Instance. All right, thank you.